you ever wonder exactly how to make the most perfect, delicious, spicy, yet savory chicken curry? Well, today I'm going to show you how I make the favorite chicken curry of all my friends right here in my kitchen. Chicken curry and rice was a staple in my house growing up. It was something that my mom or dad would whip up within just a few minutes and it was delicious, it was nutritious, and we ate it often. There is no restaurant, there is no restaurant in all of Manhattan that makes chicken curry the traditional Tamil way. So I have to make it here at home. The great thing about making chicken curry is that it's cheap, it is fast, and it is so, so, so good. So I'm gonna show you how I do it and maybe you can try doing it at home. For chicken curry, you need some chicken and then you need onions. Now in Sri Lanka, they use just these little tiny red onions. The thing about them is they're so annoying to peel and you have to peel every single one. So I don't know who's sitting there peeling these onions, but this is what they use. They do have a different flavor. So if you can find them and you wanna make it really, really authentic, use the little onions. You can use any onion though. I like to, if I can find these onions, I like to use a mix. Some of these and some yellow onion. Yellow onion's a little sweeter. You need some fresh curry leaves. You can also use dry. If you don't have them, you don't have to put them in. You need some garlic. And some ginger root, peeled. And then some long green chilies. These are really, really hot. Depending on your heat tolerance, you can put in less or more. You can cut the chili open, take out the seeds, which are the really hot part, and just put in the outer part. Um, I like the chicken curry to be hot, hot. So I put, I put in a couple of these, but it's, it's, it makes it really hot. I like to prep everything over here before I start cooking. So it's all ready to go. Onions get chopped up. I need a bigger knife. I need a big boy knife. That's better. This is not fine dining. So you can be kind of rustic with your chopping. Yellow onion. Again, I'm using a mix of yellow onion and the small red onions. Yellow onion gets chopped up. The green chili gets sliced into sort of slivers. So a couple green chilies chopped up. Garlic. Some nice local garlic. Really nice. Just peel this. Peel the garlic. And we need a bit of ginger. Peel the ginger. We want about a couple teaspoons of ginger. So the ginger and the garlic goes into a mortar and pestle and just gets pounded together into a sort of paste. My preference for chicken is chicken legs with the bone in, the skin taken off. I get my chicken from a grocery store with a butcher and it's very convenient because I ask the butcher to cut it up for me. The way I like this cut up, the way it's sort of traditionally cut up is into almost cubes. So the leg is cut down the middle lengthwise and then it's cut into about three additional pieces to make little square pieces that each have a piece of bone in it. You can make this chicken curry with any cut of chicken, but having the bone in add so much flavor. The bones add an almost stock to the chicken curry. So if you don't mind bones, do it this way. We finish the chicken curry off with some coconut milk. You can use canned coconut milk. There's also a coconut milk powder that's dehydrated that you can use. I like to make my own coconut milk with fresh coconuts and use that. Check out my video on how to actually take a coconut and make your own coconut milk. Chili powder. This is traditional Sri Lankan chili powder, Jaffna style. 
and I've made this chili powder. I have a video on how to make this chili powder. This is essential to chicken curry. Salt. Spices. Turmeric. So now I've prepared the base of the curry and now I'm just gonna move over to the stove and start cooking. We need to add some oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil, coconut oil even if you want. First, I add the onions. You wanna cook the onions until they start to wilt before you add the next ingredient, which is the garlic and the ginger. Some curry leaves. Just tear them up. Tearing them up releases the flavor. Very nice. Look at that, that's beautiful. I'm gonna add these green chilies. Chicken goes in, and as this chicken is sauteing, we wanna add some turmeric. Now we add the homemade Sri Lankan chili powder, molakatul in Tamil. And again, add it to your tolerance of heat because this is hot. So one scoop, I'm gonna, ah! I'm gonna put in three scoops. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be real hot and nice. Delicious. Some salt. This chicken curry should have a nice gravy, like a sauce to it. And at this point, I'm gonna add some liquid, but be conscious of how much liquid you add because the chicken is gonna release a lot of its own juices and that liquid level will rise. So don't put in a lot of liquid at this point, just a little bit, and then you can adjust it later. You can put in water, but if you have the second and third extractions of coconut milk, if you make coconut milk yourself, like I've shown you, use the thin coconut milk at this point, the second or the third extraction of the coconut milk. You see how much liquid there is in there? Not a lot, just a little bit. And you'll be shocked at how much gravy there is in the end from the chicken giving off its own juices, from the chicken releasing its own juices. This already looks so good. Give it a really good stir. Get everything nicely mixed up. And then, once this is nicely stirred together, cover it with the lid. Turn the heat to low and let it sit there for about half an hour. Checking every now and then to make sure it's not burning on the bottom and giving it a stir every so often, every five minutes or so. There we go. Okay. So it's very clear to see how much liquid has come out of the chicken. Isn't that very impressive? So all that liquid is from the chicken. And that's why the bones are important because the bones cooking in this liquid and extracting their own liquid they give this so much rich flavor. I can feel it when I'm, when I'm poking the chicken. I can feel that it's still a little tough and I wanna be able, I wanna see it kind of falling off the bone. It's not quite there yet. Just like five more minutes. Another sign that it's done is when the fat from the chicken has also kind of melted and you can see that on the top of here. You can see these grease spots. That's how I like to tell it it's done. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Once I've turned the heat off, I'm going to finish this curry off with some very thick coconut milk. This is the first squeezing of coconut milk that I made from fresh coconut flesh. You can also use coconut cream out of a can, just a little bit, like two tablespoons. Oh boy, that looks so good. Just a little stir. It's the real deal. Just a very simple, traditional, normal Tamil chicken curry. 
the way I knew it growing up. It's done. Now it should just should just sit there for five or ten minutes to let all the flavors come together with that final addition of coconut milk. And then you can eat it. Parango. Ningal. You pretty easy thing in that? You pretty ever. What that means is if you make it like this, this is how it'll turn out. And uh, it just makes me so happy to cook this food. It reminds me of, it reminds me of being a kid. So much of being a kid was awful, but there were very, very nice parts. And this was one of them. Every relative had their own version of chicken curry. And now I have my version. So as I said before, it's cheap. It's fairly simple to make. It is so delicious. What do you think? Are you inspired to maybe try making this at home? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down. But either way, subscribe for more videos like this one.